evening, everyone. I'm Estela Casas. It was an unprecedented decision by the Texas Commissioner of Education. Two years ago, Michael Williams removed the El Paso ISD Board of Trustees and put in a board of managers he handpicked. There, they had the task of righting the wrongs of a previous administration and restoring trust after a cheating scandal rocked the district. Williams today announced it was time to shift the power back to the people. ABC 7's Ashley Rodriguez was at the swearing-in ceremony of the trustees. She's live now with the details. Ashley. Go. The people El Paso elected are now in charge, but that doesn't mean they won't be under the watchful eye of Commissioner Williams and the Texas Education Agency. Today is a new day, and after the success of the Board of Managers, we now move on to what I said originally, that after things were settled, we would return the reins of this district to the people of El Paso and to the elected trustees. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Seven brand new trustees who've never overseen a school district, more or less the largest in the county, with nearly 6,000 students and 9,000 employees, are now in charge. And I look forward to working with them. The new board, Vice President Al Velarde, Secretary Trent Hatch, President Dory Fennenbaugh, Bob Jeske, Susie Bird, Diane Dye, and Charles Taylor, will not be on their own. Williams is choosing to put in a monitor, former Hancock ISD superintendent and educator Fred Liner. Liner has experience in the region, being a former director of Region 19, as well as a previous TEA monitor and conservator. Liner will be reporting back to Williams quarterly for an unspecified period of time until he feels the board is ready to be on their own. So the Texas Education Agency stands ready to provide support, assistance, guidance if they ask for it, as the new trustees move forward. And it is not unusual for a monitor to say, you know, they're all right. They don't need my help anymore. Before leaving, Williams thanked Dee Margo and the board of managers he appointed. But like he promised, he's giving EPISD back to the people. I don't anticipate any unique problems that they will have. Now the trustees will be attending trainings, including a meeting with the superintendent on June 2nd and budget workshops throughout the month. Their first task will be to set a budget and a tax rate before the first day of school. Their first regular board meeting is June 23rd. Back to you. And the work begins. Okay. More than 60,000 students in the district. Thank you, Ashley. Meanwhile, EPISD told ABC7 a new state investigation is underway. EPISD's internal audit found potential irregularities dealing with attendance. The district self-reported its findings to the TEA, who is now handling the investigation. As for the former EPISD superintendent, Lorenzo Garcia, in 2012, Garcia pleaded guilty for his role in the cheating scheme. He was sentenced to three and a half years in federal prison, but was released last Halloween, a full year early, after completing a substance abuse program. He was ordered to pay $180,000 restitution, plus a fine of more than $56,000. Court documents show Garcia now lives in Houston, where he works for a roofing company.